Welcome to the yet another session of clinical scenarios and this is your case number 17. Now here we have a patient who is 32 year old male construction worker. So they are telling you about the environment in which he is working. He is a construction worker and presents with pain, watering and redness in the left eye for the past two days. So this is an acute problem that is occurring in a 32 year male who is a construction worker and what are the complaints? The pain, the redness and watering. Now he reports having the similar symptoms in the same eye few months ago. So this complaint is something of that sort which can have the recurrent lesions, anything that can cause the recurrent lesions. The examination of that same eye also reveals the vesicles and the dendritic ulcers in the cornea. The vitals are stable and they are asking what is the most probable diagnosis. So let us see the options. The options are bacterial keratitis, herpes simplex keratitis, herpes zoster of thalmicus or the corneal ulcers. So I think all the four options they have given which are causing the sudden and painful sudden painful diminution of vision. Bacterial keratitis means bacterial corneal ulcer or um, the viral keratitis, it can be herpes simplex or herpes zoster. Now these two will not cause pain, okay, but uh, they it will cause the discomfort. Why I am saying this? Though the viral ulcers will also cause pain, but because we have got the decreased corneal sensations. In cases of viral ulcer, we have the decreased corneal sensations, so uh, that can be masked at times. And the uh, fourth one is corneal abrasion. Now corneal abrasion actually will not cause pain, again this will cause discomfort unless and until it is actually superseded by the secondary bacterial infection. Now if you look at the complaints, he is a construction site worker and he is having pain, he is having watering and he is having a redness in the eye and he was also having the similar symptoms few months back. So that means it is not a case of corneal abrasion, like corneal abrasion will not uh, cause the episodic uh, pain and watering. If it is there, then it will continue to cause the problem, right? But here they are saying that there was a uh, episode, then it uh, went fine and then again now the patient is having the pain, watering and redness. So that uh, is kind of uh, ruling out the possibility of corneal abrasion. Now, if you look at the examination, because you know pain, redness and watering can occur in bacterial keratitis, it can occur in viral keratitis. But if I talk about the vesicles and the dendritic ulcers, so dendritic ulcers, this is very, very specific of the viral keratitis. You know dendritic keratitis is very, very specific of viral keratitis and if I talk about per se dendritic keratitis, then it is herpes simplex, right? So now you will think about herpes simplex virus or the herpes zoster of thalamicus. Now they have added one thing that we also have the vesicles. So where do we have vesicles? We do not have vesicles in the herpes simplex. We have the vesicles in herpes zoster. So most probably this is a case of herpes zoster of thalmicus. Now let us try to assume what are the things that are present in this patient. So there is a patient here which is having the eye involvement and here you can see the uh, forehead involvement. There are vesicles on one side of the face that is very very typical of herpes zoster of thalmicus. We have got strict involvement. Here we have strict involvement of one side of the forehead. So that strict involvement of one side of the forehead you can see. You can see the forehead also involved on the same side. 
the eye also involved on the same side as well as the nose tip of the nose or the side of the nose so that is involved because whichever side trigeminal nerve is involved the three divisions of trigeminal nerve what are the three divisions of trigeminal nerve we have got the uh, frontal division then we have this ophthalmic division and then we have the nasociliary division so they are involved in the same sequence first is the frontal division involved so we have the uh, frontal uh, these uh, forehead rashes then is the ocular involvement and in the last we have this nasociliary involvement and that is why we follow what you called as hutchison rule what is this hutchison rule this is very very important Hutchison rule says that that if the patient is showing you rashes on the tip of the nose or the side of the nose that means ocular involvement are, is very very much there why because you know nasociliary division is always involved after the ophthalmic division so if the patient is showing the rashes on the tip of the nose or the side of the nose that means already the ophthalmic division has been involved and there will be changes in the eye uh, mostly we as ophthalmologists are very much dependent on this uh, when it comes to decide whether we should start the treatment or not. If the patient is coming in that phase where he has already he or she uh, is showing you involvement of eye that's not a problem but if I have to decide whether or not I should start the treatment and I am not getting any problem in eye then the Hutchison rule is very much required. Then what is the other thing? They are also seeing the dendritic pattern. Now you have to understand there are two things. One is dendritic pattern and one are pseudodendrites. So actually you do not get the true dendrites in the happy zoster. Like if you see this, these are actually the pseudodendritic pattern. What do you mean by pseudodendrites? Pseudodendrite means no knobs. Can you see here? There is actually a dendritic arborizing pattern is present, but you do not have the knobs here. So this is pseudo dendritic pattern. This is present in herpes zoster and it is also present in acanthamoeba. So these are the two um, places where you are getting the pseudo dendritic pattern. Most of the times when they use this word in the question, they do not give it as pseudo dendritic pattern. They just use dendritic pattern in order to confuse you. But you should know that pseudo dendritic pattern is present in herpes zoster and acanthamoeba. And true dendritic pattern is something like this. Can you see we have got typically the knobs present here. These are the knobs. So the knobs are present always in cases of true dendrite so uh, whenever you are seeing the knobs this is actually herpes simplex virus and there will be no vesicles no systemic involvement in cases of herpes simplex virus you are not getting any systemic involvement so you have vesicles here you have the dendritic pattern both can be found in the herpes zoster of thalmicus now what are the other things herpes zoster of thalmicus actually you have to remember that this is caused by varicella zoster virus. This is caused by the varicella zoster virus which is already a known virus because it causes the chicken pox. Now all those people who have already suffered from chicken pox it gives you lifelong immunity but these people can have herpes zoster of thalmicus. So they are not immune from herpes zoster of thalmicus right and 50 percent of the patients actually shows the involvement of the eye or we have the eye complications right so basically herpes zoster of thalmicus any person who has previously suffered from uh, the chicken pox there are 50 percent chances that this person will have eye involvement and ocular complications now as far as the recurrence is concerned recurrent attacks so recurrent attacks are also very much uh, possible in herpes zoster of thalmicus rather it is possible in both herpes virus as well as uh, herpes simplex as well as the herpes zoster because uh, what happens when we have the primary lesions okay uh, in the primary lesions basically they cause the 
superficial punctate keratitis only small punctate lesions are present then this virus will go and it becomes dormant in the trigeminal ganglions so because of their unique property that they remain dormant in the trigeminal ganglions there are two things that you get first of all we get the decreased corneal sensations which is a very very important hallmark that you are getting in the viral lesions plus you are also getting the recurrent lesions so whenever there is a uh, opportunity these uh, virus can come back and they can cause a recurrent lesions it is the recurrent lesions in which they are causing the pseudo dendritic pattern okay pseudo dendritic pattern in herpes uh, zoster and dendritic pattern in the herpes simplex then um, they are also causing uh, what you called as numular keratitis they are also causing the numular keratitis what happens in cases of herpes simplex it is actually the dendritic keratitis which is more characteristic but in the herpes zoster it is the numular keratitis which is the disc like areas or the coin like areas that you are getting they are very many significant so this is one viral uh, keratitis where you are getting the pseudodendritic pattern you are having all the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve involved you also have the systemic features so it actually starts with the systemic features so this patient will typically come with a high grade fever chills and rigors intense trigeminal neuralgia that is very very typical and sometimes you even can get confused with that trigeminal neuralgia but that trigeminal neuralgia is that on the same site where the nerve is involved and you get to know that where actually these lesions will occur then after 3 to 4 days there will be eruptions on the uh, skin you will get the cutaneous eruptions you will get uh, this frontal um, involvement due to which you are having the eruptions on the forehead and in the third phase then you will have the eye involvement so it is the last so in the eye involvement we have array of the things that is acting but two things are again very very important uh, one is your neurotrophic keratitis neurotrophic keratitis and one is called as the neuroparalytic neurotrophic keratitis and neuroparalytic neuro means nerve so on both sides we have some problem with the nerve this side we have trophic trophic means sensory and sensory nerve is fifth nerve so when it is the fifth nerve problem fifth nerve palsy is causing the keratitis then it is called as neurotrophic keratitis but here we have paralytic so it is the motor nerve what is the motor nerve of the eye that is your facial nerve that is seventh nerve why because this supplies the orbicularis oculi muscle this is supplying orbicularis oculi muscle which actually functions to close the eye so due to the involvement of this muscle he is not able to close the eye and this person suffers from exposure keratitis so this person starts having exposure keratitis so they can ask you with exposure keratitis or with the um, neuroparalytic keratitis answer will be same the facial palsy while if they are asking you about the neurotrophic keratitis then it is the trigeminal palsy so i hope now it's very very clear in case of any doubt you people can always send me your doubt you can also send me your feedback what are your comments about uh, how do you like the videos are these clinical scenarios helping and also your suggestions the like suggestions for improvement are always welcome please let me know you can uh, approach me on any of the social media platforms Thank you and happy ophthalmology.